In the news this week, the UK government stands by its decision to allow churches to remain open. Experts evidence on puberty blockers for gender confused children is revealed and Christian persecution rises dramatically in 2020. Hello. The Westminster government has confirmed that churches in England can remain open for public worship after some churches reported receiving letters from their local authorities asking them to voluntarily cease services. A government spokesperson said in line with national guidelines, places of worship can remain open for communal worship and individual prayer, as long as they follow strict social distancing guidelines. Churches in mainland Scotland were legally required to close last week, but 200 church leaders responded by writing to First Minister Nicola Sturgeon to protest. The open letter says the move may be unlawful and demonstrates a failure to understand that Christian worship is an essential public service. Reverend Dr William Philip of the Tron Church in Glasgow, who co-authored the letter, said prohibiting worship has been disproportionate and unnecessary. We think that uh, churches being open, uh, it's not just a matter of our sort of preferred recreational activity and well, if people can't play tennis, why should you be able to go to church? It, it, it's not that at all. It's a vital lifeline uh, to many, many people, physically and uh, mentally, uh, as well as, of course, uh, spiritually. The testimonies of medical experts in the recent Kira Bell High Court case have been released after a legal challenge. They were disclosed after lawyers for the Mail on Sunday successfully argued that it was in the public interest. Their evidence sheds new light on the risks to gender-confused children who are given puberty-blocking drugs. Professor Christopher Gilberg, recognised by the court as an expert in child and adolescent psychiatry, said giving puberty blocking drugs is tantamount to conducting a live experiment on vulnerable children. We have left established evidence-based clinical practice and are using powerful life-altering medication for a vulnerable group of adolescents and children based upon a belief. His testimony was supported by clinical psychiatrist Professor Stephen Levine, who said the drugs are not proven to be safe and effective intervention in the short or long term for use on gender-confused children. He added, there is no other field of medicine where such radical interventions are offered to children with such a poor evidence base. The Open Doors World Watch List has revealed more than 340 million Christians worldwide suffered high levels of persecution last year, a dramatic rise from 260 million in 2019. The report revealed Christians in the 50 worst countries had limited access to aid and relief, while women and girls were at increased risk of kidnapping, forcible conversion and forced marriage. Open Doors CEO Henrietta Blythe said, My heart breaks when I hear of believers in India and Vietnam being refused food aid and told, Let your God feed you. Or when I hear of women like a Christian mother of three from Egypt who was kidnapped by the Muslim Brotherhood and forced to declare she had converted in a video. However, I don't despair. I have seen face to face the inspiring strength and bravery of Christians around the world who deal with this persecution. The new special envoy for freedom of religion or belief addressed the subject in a speech in Parliament. MP Fiona Bruce said she recognised the scale of the problem and would work closely with people around the world to make a positive impact. She said tackling religious intolerance needs to be at the heart of our policies because the rights to education, jobs, homes, family life, access to justice, liberty and even life itself all can be at risk. She added that the heart of freedom of religion or belief is based on respecting the unique worth of every created human being. It is about the importance of treating every individual with dignity. Well, that's all for this week. For more information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.